From colossal flight decks capable of launching an entire air force to massive vessels that are powerful enough to defeat small nations, these giant aircraft carriers are the largest in the world. So for today's video, join me as we explore 15 of the biggest aircraft carriers in the world. Number 15. The USS Gerald R. Ford Commissioned on July 22, 2017, the USS Gerald R. Ford is the lead ship of the Ford class of aircraft carriers and is the most advanced and largest warship ever built for the United States Navy. In terms of size, it's massive. It's got an overall length of approximately 1,106 feet and a beam of 134 feet. The flight deck is huge, too, covering an area of about five acres. Regarding its aircraft carrying capacity, it's designed to accommodate anywhere from 75 to 90 aircraft. That includes a mix of fixed-wing aircraft like the F-A-18 Super Hornets and the F-35C Lightning II, as well as rotary-wing aircraft like the MH-60R and S helicopters. The carrier has an electromagnetic aircraft launch system and an advanced arresting gear system, which replace those traditional steam catapults and arresting wires, respectively. These state-of-the-art systems allow for more precise and efficient aircraft launches and recoveries, reducing stress on the airframes and enabling a broader range of aircraft to be operated from the deck. Because it's so new, this giant aircraft carrier hasn't taken part in any battles or military conflicts. However, it is the physical embodiment of the saying, speak softly and carry a big stick. So while it does have plenty of technical and tactical advantages, it's more of a preemptive power play. In the event of a war or conflict, the United States wants its enemies to know that they'll be up against the might of the USS Gerald R. Ford. Number 14. USS John F. Kennedy The carrier is the second ship of its name, following the decommissioning of the previous USS John F. Kennedy in 2007. Much like its presidential sister ship, this one is a doozy. It's got a length of approximately 1,092 feet and a beam of 134 feet. This is one of the most massive and formidable warships the world has ever seen. Like its lead ship, the USS Gerald R. Ford, the USS John F. Kennedy employs advanced features such as the electromagnetic aircraft launch system and the advanced arresting gear. Its enhanced design allows for greater aircraft capacity, making it capable of carrying around 90 fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters, too. That means even more F-A-18 Super Hornets and F-35C Lightning IIs, as well as MH-60s all of which are some of the most powerful military aircraft in the skies today. But high-tech, high-grade military aircraft isn't the only thing this carrier is bringing to the party. Sure, the primary offense comes from those planes it carries, but the ship can also hold its own. To defend against anti-ship missiles and threats from low-flying aircraft, the carrier is equipped with a close-in weapon system, surface-to-air missiles, and electronic warfare systems, just to name a few. Number 13. The Admiral Kunetsov the Admiral Kuznetsov is a heavy aircraft carrying cruiser and the flagship of the Russian Navy. It's named after Admiral Nikolay G. Kuznetsov, a prominent Soviet naval commander during World War II. This carrier is unique among its contemporaries due to its designation as a cruiser rather than a traditional aircraft carrier. It was commissioned in 1991. It's the only operational aircraft carrier in the Russian Navy. It serves as a power projection platform, allowing Russia to maintain a naval presence in various regions and project force beyond its shores. However, the carrier has faced significant challenges during its service life, including technical issues and limited capabilities compared to modern aircraft carriers. At about 1,000 feet long, this Russian carrier has got a displacement of approximately 58,000 tons, and it's equipped with a ski jump deck for short takeoffs of fixed-wing aircraft. It primarily operates a mix of fixed wing, including the Sukhoi Su-33 and the Mikoyan MiG-29K fighters, as well as the Kamov Ka-27 and Ka-31 helicopters for anti-submarine warfare and reconnaissance. Despite its operational status, the carrier's been plagued with reliability and maintenance problems. The ship underwent an extensive refit and modernization in the early 2010s to extend its service life and address some of its technical shortcomings. However, as of the last update on this channel in 2021, it hadn't been fully operational due to further maintenance and upgrades. But despite the problems plaguing the Admiral, it's seen its fair share of battle, most notably during the Syrian Civil War. Number 12. The INS Vikramaditya The Vikramaditya is an aircraft carrier that serves as the flagship of the Indian Navy. It was formerly known as the Admiral Gorshkov. The carrier was commissioned into the Indian Navy on November 16, 2013, after undergoing extensive modernization and refurbishment. The acquisition of it marked a milestone achievement in India's naval capabilities, bolstering its maritime presence and power production in the Indian Ocean region. 
It has a displacement of approximately 45,000 tons and measures about 930 feet in length with a width of around 200 feet. Its size and massive flight deck allow it to accommodate a mix of fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters, making it pretty versatile and a potent platform for various naval operations. The carrier operates under the short takeoff but arrested recovery system, utilizing a ski jump ramp on its flight deck to launch the fixed-wing aircraft. It primarily operates with the MiG-29K multi-role fighters, which provide air superiority, strike capability, and reconnaissance support. Upon return, these aircraft use arresting wires to safely come to a stop during the landing process. And additionally, the Vicora Medigia can deploy a range of rotary wing aircraft for anti-submarine warfare, search and rescue, and surveillance missions. It pretty much can do it all. Equipped with modern radar, sensor systems, and electronic warfare capability, this Royal Indian carrier ensures situational awareness and self-defense readiness during moments of modern warfare. The carrier has participated in several multinational naval exercises, building naval partnerships and enhancing cooperations with other countries. While the carrier has not seen war, its operational presence serves as a visible deterrent, if anything else. Number 11. The Charles de Gaulle The Charles de Gaulle is a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier and the flagship of the French Navy. It's the only aircraft carrier in active service within the French fleet and holds significant place in France's naval history. It's named after the French military leader and statesman Charles de Gaulle. The carrier was commissioned in 2001 and has since played a critical role in France's maritime defense strategy. When it comes to size, the Charles de Gaulle has a full load displacement of approximately 42,500 tons. It measures about 858 feet in length with a beam of around 211 feet at the waterline. Its massive flight deck covers an area of 26,000 square meters, providing more than enough space for flight operations. The Charles de Gaulle operates the Rafale M multi-role fighters, which provide the air superiority, ground attack, and reconnaissance capability. It also deploys the E-2C Hawkeye airborne early warning aircraft for surveillance and control of the airspace. The E-2C Hawkeye is an airborne early warning and command and control aircraft, serving as the eyes of the fleet, providing long-range surveillance, detecting threats, and managing airspace. The distinctive radar dome on top of its fuselage houses a powerful radar system capable of tracking and identifying aircraft. Having some of these on board makes Charles de Gaulle a force to be reckoned with. Additionally, the carrier is fitted with electronic warfare systems to counter any electronic threats. One of the notable features of the Charles de Gaulle is its nuclear propulsion system. The carrier is powered by two pressurized water reactors, or PWRs, which provide significant advantages in terms of endurance and range. This nuclear propulsion allows the carrier to operate for extended periods at high speeds without the need for frequent refueling, making it one of the most responsive and flexible carriers in the world. Number 10. The Shandong Type 002 Shandong, hull number 17, also known as the Type 002, is a Chinese aircraft carrier and the first of its kind to be domestically built by China. The carrier was commissioned into the People's Liberations Army Navy on December 17, 2019, marking a significant milestone in China's efforts to strengthen its naval capability. The Shandong has a full load displacement estimated to be around 50,000 tons, making it the second aircraft carrier in China's fleet after the Liaoning, a modified Kuznetsov-class carrier from Russia. This carrier measures approximately 1,033 feet in length, with a beam of about 246 feet and a draft of around 36 feet. When you have a carrier of this magnitude, that means she's got plenty of room for high-tech and deadly aircraft. The carrier primarily operates J-15 fighter jets, a Chinese variant of the Russian Sukhoi Su-33. Also known as the Flying Shark, the J-15 is a twin-engine, twin-tail carrier-based fighter jet with a delta wing configuration. It's got a large wing area and robust landing gear to handle the demanding takeoff and landing requirements of something like the Type 002. The fighter is also equipped with a retractable in-flight refueling probe, allowing it to extend its operational range and leave the nest for longer than your typical aircraft. The J-15 is a multi-role fighter, capable of conducting various missions including air-to-air -air combat, air-to-ground strikes, and reconnaissance, and the Type 002 is the perfect place for these fighters to roost. It's armed with a combination of air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-surface missiles, and precision-guided munitions, enabling it to engage a wide range of targets with precision. This means that the Shandong is a perfect carrier to deploy any sort of aircraft for roles like anti-submarine warfare, search and rescue, and airborne early warning. Has the Shandong Type 002 been in the thick of it? No. But is it a massive floating deterrent? Absolutely. Number 9. J.S. Izumo 
Moving over to the land of the rising sun, the JS Izumo is a helicopter carrier in the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. Commissioned in March of 2015, it's the lead ship of the Izumo class, along with its sister ship, the JS Kaga. There was a time when Japan was known for its naval dominance, and the Izumo carrier is a stark reminder of the former empire's power. The JS Izumo is the largest surface combatant in the JMSDF fleet, and it's often referred to as a helicopter destroyer due to its size and primary focus on operating helicopters. The carrier has a full load displacement of approximately 27,000 tons, making it one of the largest warships in the Japanese fleet since World War II. It measures about 814 feet in length, with a beam of approximately 125 feet. It can carry up to 14 helicopters, including the Mitsubishi SK-60KK anti-submarine warfare helicopters and the Kawasaki MCH-101 mine countermeasure helicopters. These helicopters play a vital role in Japan's maritime security, conducting anti-submarine warfare, reconnaissance, and humanitarian assistance. It was designed with modularity and flexibility in mind. Its open deck space allows for the potential addition of vertical takeoff and landing aircraft in the future. Such VTOL aircraft could include the deadly F-35 Lightning B-2, a variant of the fifth-generation multi-role fighter capable of short takeoffs and landings. The addition of VTOL aircraft would significantly increase the carrier's versatility and potential for power projection, but all of those whirlybirds doesn't mean that the Izumo can't take care of herself. Carriers fitted with phalanx close-in weapon systems, rapid-fire Gatling guns designed to defend against anti-ship missiles and other close-range threats, as well as some hefty anti-submarine warfare torpedoes and decoy launchers to counter potential sub-threats. The Izumo is a lesser-known carrier in the world of world navies, but it definitely deserves attention, and while it may not be the largest Japan's ever built, it's certainly one of the more lethal, more unique carriers in the ocean. Number 8. Atlantico Atlantico is an amphibious helicopter carrier operated by the Brazilian Navy. Formerly known as the HMS Ocean, it was acquired from the United Kingdom in 2018 and renamed Atlantico after joining the Brazilian fleet. Today, she's the flagship vessel of the Brazilian Navy. This Brazilian beast is a medium-sized helicopter carrier with a displacement of approximately 21,000 tons. It measures a demonic 666 feet in length with a beam of approximately 115 feet and a draft of around 25 feet. The original HMS Ocean was commissioned into the Royal Navy on October 30, 1998. Throughout its service with the Royal Navy, the carrier was involved in various military operations and missions, showcasing its versatility and its capabilities. Some notable deployments include participating in operations during the Kosovo War and the invasion of Iraq in 2003. The carrier was also actively involved in humanitarian and disaster relief operations. One significant mission was during the 2010 earthquake in Haiti, where the HMS Ocean played a crucial role in delivering aid and assisting in disaster relief. The helicopter carrier package for Brazil includes an Artisan 3D search radar, KH-1007 surface surveillance radar system, four 30-miller DS-30M Mark II remote weapon systems, and four Mark V B landing craft. However, the three original 20mm Mark 15 Block 1B Phalanx close-in weapon systems, the torpedo defense systems, and the 7.62mm M134 machine guns were removed from the ship before the transfer to Brazil. The carrier was sent to the port of São Sebastião to provide a field hospital for rescue efforts during the 2023 Sao Paulo floods and landslides. On board, the vessel carried 28 medics of several specialties, including surgeons, dentists, and orthopedists, and 180 marines who all came aboard in aid of the search and rescue efforts. Moving on to number 7, Juan Carlos I. Juan Carlos I is an awesome multi-purpose amphibious assault ship and aircraft carrier operated by the Spanish Navy. Named after the former King of Spain, Juan Carlos I is approximately 758 feet in length, with a beam of about 105 feet. It's got a full load displacement of around 26,000 tons, making it one of the largest warships in the Spanish Navy. Its design includes a well deck for launching and recovering amphibious vehicles, as well as a spacious flight deck and hangars to accommodate fixed wing aircraft. The vessel has a 663 foot long flight deck with a ski jump ramp. The ship's flight deck has eight landing spots for Harrier, F-35 Lightning II or medium-sized helicopters, and four spots for heavy helicopters like the CH-47 Chinook or V-22 Osprey size. It can either carry 30 helicopters or 10 to 12 McDonnell Douglas AV-8B Harrier II or Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II and 10 to 12 helicopters, using the light vehicles bay as an additional storage zone. The ship also uses diesel-electric propulsion, simultaneously connecting both diesel and the new technology gas turbine power plant to a pair of azimuth pods. 
For the first time in the Spanish Navy, one of Juan Carlos's biggest missions began in November of 2013 after Typhoon Haiyan, one of the most powerful tropical cyclones on record, Typhoon Haiyan landed in the Philippines and it caused widespread destruction and loss of life. The Spanish Navy, including the Juan Carlos I, deployed to provide humanitarian assistance and disaster relief to the affected communities. Its ability to carry a significant contingent of embarked troops, vehicles, and aircrafts, including helicopters, allowed it to support relief efforts and deliver essential supplies. Simply put, the Juan Carlos I is a lifesaver. Number 6. HTMS Chakri Nerubet The HTMS Chakri Nerubet is a significant asset in the Royal Thai Navy and holds the distinction of being Thailand's first and only aircraft carrier. The name Chakri Nerubet translates to Sovereign of the Chakri Dynasty, referencing the Thai monarchy's ruling family. The carrier is referred to as an offshore patrol helicopter carrier by the RTN, emphasizing its role in both patrolling and supporting helicopter operations. The design of it is based on the Spanish Navy's Principe de Estorias design. The construction was carried out by the Spanish shipbuilder Bazan. The carrier's journey began in 1992 when it was first ordered, following the laying down of the keel in 1994 and the launch in 1996. Finally, in 1997, it was commissioned into the RTN, marking a significant milestone in Thailand's maritime capability. With a length of approximately 538 feet and a displacement of about 11,000 tons, it's considered the smallest functioning aircraft carrier in the world. Despite its relatively compact size, the carrier is designed to handle an air group of vertical short takeoff and landing, fighter aircraft, and helicopters. The presence of an aircraft ski jump on its flight deck allows for the launch of aircraft with short takeoff requirements. Initially, the carrier was intended to operate a mixed air group consisting of ex-Spanish AV-8S Matador Harrier Vistal aircraft and Sikorsky SH-60 Seahawk helicopters. However, operational challenges, including parts availability and fiscal limitations, resulted in only one Matador being operational by 1999. Over time, the entire Harrier jet fleet was retired from service in 2006. The Chakri Narubet is fitted with two 50 caliber machine guns and three Matra Sadral sextuple surface-to-air missile launchers firing Mistral missiles. These missile launchers were installed in 2001, and the vessel is also fitted for, but not with, an 8-cell Mark 41 vertical launch system for Sea Sparrow missiles and four Phalanx close-in weapon systems. The carrier reportedly doesn't have a functioning anti-aircraft defense system installed. It's also capable of carrying up to 14 additional helicopters, a mix of Sikorsky Sea King, Sikorsky S-76, and CH-47 Chinooks. There's also enough hangar space for 10 aircraft. She may be the smallest carrier in the ocean, but it's also the most important to her home country. Number 5. Cavour On November 22, 2000, at the turn of the century, a contract was drawn up between Fincantieri and the Italian Ministry of Naval Defense to supply an aircraft carrier vessel known as the Nuovo Unita Maggiore, or New Major Vessel, to the Italian Navy. Built on the new behemoth vessel, which was originally to be called the Andrea Doria, but has been named the Cavour, began at Fincantieri shipyards in Riva Tigoso and Mugiano in July of 2001. The Cavour was launched in July of 2004, and it began sea trials in 2006. It was delivered to the Italian Navy in 2008 and entered service in 2009. It heeded the call of duty quickly, having taken part in the Haiti earthquake relief operations in early 2010 as part of Operation White Crane. The ship's got a displacement at full load of about 27,000 tons, an overall length of about 800 feet, and a sustained speed of about 27 knots. This carrier can accommodate up to 1,300 people on board, including five flag officers, a crew of 486, 211 person air crew, an amphibious command force of 140, a San Marco battalion of 360, and an additional 90 troops. I guess everyone is coming to play on this thing. A strong feature of the ship is its high flexibility in operational terms. It's able to carry out the functions of an aircraft carrier as well as support the transport of wheeled and tracked vessels for both military and civil missions. The aircraft hangar can accommodate 100 light vehicles or 24 main battle tanks for amphibious missions. The ship can also support four LCVP landing craft. There are two 30-ton elevators for aircraft and two 15-ton elevators for armaments. Not long ago, in 2021, Cavour deployed to the United States for its initial period of flying trials with the F-35B. 
This saw the ship engage in four weeks of verification to determine the performance envelope of the aircraft when operating from the flight deck, using a pair of aircraft from the VX-23, the U.S. Navy's test and evaluation squadron. Once these trials were completed, the ship was passed for operation with the F-35B, and it would move on to the next phase of fixed-wing flying trials, which would see Italy's own aircraft being operated from the carrier. The carrier is armed with two silver 8-cell vertical launch systems for the Eurosam SAM missile system which fires Aster-15 missiles. The Aster-15 missile has a 13-kilogram warhead and a range of about 30 kilometers. The missile's guidance is inertial, with data uplink and active radar terminal homing. For increased maneuverability in the terminal phase, the missile uses a pif paf direct control system with gas jets. It's pretty intense. The carrier is fitted with two 20-barrel Ultimolara Selex Sklar H decoy launchers for 105mm or 118mm multipurpose rockets. Sklar H provides fully automatic soft kill defense against missile threats by confusion of enemy sensors before missile firing, decoying of the missile homing system during its flight, and illumination of targets. Number 4. Sao Paulo The Sao Paulo was a former French Navy aircraft that served as the flagship of the Brazilian Navy. It was originally commissioned as the Foc in 1963. The carrier underwent extensive modernization before being transferred to Brazil in 2000. Sao Paulo became Brazil's sole aircraft carrier and a crucial asset in the country's naval capability, allowing for some power projection, air superiority, and maritime security. The Sao Paulo's history traces its construction back to the Clemenceau-class aircraft carrier Falk by the French Navy. It was laid down in 1957, launched in 1960, and commissioned in 1963. For several decades, the Falk served as a key component of France's naval force projection. In 1999, after more than three decades of service, Falk was decommissioned by the French Navy. The decision to retire her was motivated by several factors, including budget constraints and the introduction of more modern carriers. However, the vessel found new life in Brazil. In 2000, the Brazilian Navy acquired the carrier and renamed it Sao Paulo in honor of the city of Sao Paulo, Brazil's largest city. The carrier comes in at 869 feet in length, has a beam of 104 feet, a draft of just over 28 feet, and travels at about 32 knots. It was designed to carry a mixed load of fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters, offering a pretty versatile and flexible air group. The Skyhawk played a crucial role in the carrier's operations, providing air superiority and ground attack capability. Throughout its service with the Brazilian Navy, the Sao Paulo participated in various naval exercises, regional security operations, and international missions. It served as a symbol of Brazil's naval capability and provided the country with the ability to project power and maintain maritime security. Over the years, she faced various challenges, though, related to maintenance, modernization, and operational readiness. Despite efforts to extend its service life, the carrier encountered significant issues, including propulsion problems, which resulted in extended periods of maintenance and dock status. But all good things must come to an end, and in 2017, the Brazilian Navy made the difficult decision to decommission the Sao Paulo due to increasing costs and challenges associated with maintaining the aging carrier. She was officially taken out of service in November of 2018. On January 20th, 2023, the ship was seized and put out to sea by the Brazilian Navy, who declared it would scuttle the Sao Paulo into the Atlantic Ocean in February of 2023. Ciao, Sao Paulo. Number 3. The HMS Queen Elizabeth It's good to be the king, but in the case of this next massive aircraft carrier, it's even better to be the queen. The HMS Queen Elizabeth is the flagship of the Royal Navy and one of the most significant additions to the British naval fleet. This aircraft carrier, named after Queen Elizabeth I, was commissioned in 2017. As one of the largest and most advanced warships ever built for the Royal Navy, HMS Queen Elizabeth plays a critical role in Britain's Navy fleet. It's an impressively large and modern aircraft carrier with a full load displacement of approximately 65,000 tons. She measures around 920 feet in length, making her the largest warship ever constructed for the Royal Navy. That immense size allows her to accommodate an air group of 40 fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters, making her one of the most flexible carriers out there. It's more than just deploying aircraft to fight, but if need be, the Queen Elizabeth packs quite a punch. It's designed to carry a combination of 5th Gen F-35 Lightning II stealth fighter jets and various helicopters. The F-35B variant, capable of short takeoffs and vertical landings, provides the carrier with unmatched strike capability and air superiority. 
In addition to the F-35s, the carrier can deploy a wide range of helicopters, including Merlin anti-submarine and anti-surface warfare helicopters, and Wildcat reconnaissance and utility helicopters. Defensive weapons on her include the Phalanx close-in weapon system for anti-aircraft and anti-missile defense, and 30mm automated small caliber guns and miniguns for use against fast attack craft. She would be escorted into high-risk areas by the Type 45 destroyer, which was made specifically to fulfill that role. In lower-risk situations, frigates or even patrol vessels may be used instead. Incorporated into the first two blocks of her is a sophisticated handling and deployment system for air weapons known as the Highly Mechanized Weapon Handling System, with the aim of achieving a sortie generation rate that's about six times faster than any previous Royal Navy aircraft carrier. The system requires only 50 people and could be operated with as few as 12 in an emergency. Her deployment capabilities extend beyond the UK's territorial waters. Carrier's adaptability and advanced technology have allowed her to participate in multinational military exercises, strategic partnerships, and diplomatic missions. The United States has played a significant role in the development and operation of the HMS Queen Elizabeth. The integration of the F-35B Lightning II was made possible through close cooperation between the Royal Navy and the United States Marine Corps. This collaboration underscores the strong relationship between the two nations and enhances the UK's interoperability with its NATO allies. Number 2. The Lao Ning We all have to start somewhere, even aircraft carriers. The Lao Ning, designated as a Type 001 aircraft carrier, is China's first-ever operational aircraft carrier. It was a modified version of the Soviet-era Kuznetsov-class aircraft carrier, originally named Varyag. With a full load displacement of around 55,000 tons, it measures approximately 1,000 feet in length, making it, obviously, one of the largest carriers. As for its air group, the Lao Ning carries a mix of fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters. The centerpiece of its air wing, the Shenyang J-15, a domestically developed carrier-based fighter jet, it's a twin-engine, multi-role fighter capable of air superiority, strike missions, and reconnaissance. In addition to the J-15s, its air wing includes a variety of helicopters, such as the Changxi Z-18 transport helicopter, the Harbin Z-9 utility helicopter, and the Kamov Ka-31 airborne early warning helicopter. All these helicopters provide the carrier with vital capability, including anti-submarine warfare, search and rescue, and surveillance. The history of the Liaoning begins with its original construction in the former Soviet Union. The carrier, known as Varyag, was laid down in 1985, but remained incomplete due to the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991. The vessel was later sold to a Chinese company as an unfinished hull, intended for use as a floating casino in Macau. However, China had bigger plans for this vessel. In 2002, the Chinese government purchased Varyag and towed it to the Dalian shipyard for extensive refit and conversions into an aircraft carrier. After years of refurbishment and sea trials, the Liaoning was commissioned into the People's Liberation Army Navy in September of 2012. Following its commissioning, the Liaoning underwent rigorous training and exercises to build the expertise and capabilities required for carrier operations. This involved practicing takeoffs and landings with the J-15s, honing the flight deck operations, and mastering carrier-based operations in various weather conditions. It's been actively deployed in the Western Pacific and South China Sea regions, demonstrating China's mentality of speaking softly and carrying a big stick. The carrier has been involved in various military exercises and maritime patrols, and it's a pretty massive show of naval power, to say the least. Number 1. The USS Nimitz the USS Nimitz is one of the most iconic, lethal, and largest aircraft carriers in the history of the United States Navy. It's named after Fleet Admiral Chester W. Nimitz. The carrier was commissioned in 1975 and has been a crucial component of the U.S. Navy's power projection capabilities ever since. The Nimitz is an impressive nuclear-powered aircraft carrier with a full load displacement of over 100,000 tons. She measures around 1,092 feet in length, making her one of the largest warships ever. The carrier's enormous size allows it to accommodate a formidable air wing that typically consists of around 60 to 70 aircraft. The air wing includes a mix of fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters. The centerpiece of the air wing is the versatile and powerful Boeing F-A-18 Hornet and Super Hornet fighter jets. These multi-role aircraft are capable of conducting air-to-air -air combat, air-to-ground strikes, and electronic warfare missions, making them vital assets for the carrier's operation. Additionally, the Nimitz carries a variety of support aircraft, such as E-2 Hawkeye Airborne Early Warning Aircraft, C-2 Greyhound Carrier Onboard Delivery Aircraft, and various helicopters for anti-submarine warfare, search and rescue, and logistics support. 
Throughout its long and illustrious service, the Nimitz has participated in various military exercises, operations, and deployments worldwide. The carrier has been involved in numerous combat and humanitarian missions, showcasing the flexibility and reach of the U.S. carrier strike groups. The Nimitz has been involved in plenty of military operations, with one of the most notable being during Operation Desert Storm in 1991. It served as the centerpiece of the Carrier Battle Group 9, part of the larger naval task force deployed to the Arabian Gulf during the conflict. The Carrier Strike Group presence was a crucial element in projecting American air power and providing support for ground operations. The Carrier's E-2 Hawkeye aircraft provided critical ISR capabilities, gathering real-time intelligence, monitoring enemy movements, and directing air assets during the conflict. The intelligence allowed for the deployment of F-14 Tomcats and F-A-18 Hornet fighter jets to gain and maintain air superiority over the region. Particularly, the Nimitz's EA-6B Prowlers were tasked with the suppression of air enemy defense missions. Those Prowlers used electronic warfare systems to suppress and disrupt Iraqi air defense systems, protecting coalition aircraft from anti-aircraft missiles and radars. But perhaps even more importantly, the USS Nimitz also played a role in providing humanitarian assistance during and after the conflict. The carrier served as the platform for the delivery of aid and relief supplies to those who were affected by the war. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.